Okay. So in this example, what we want to do is determine our concavity and identify our possible point of inflection. Well, since we're talking about the concavity, that's going to be on the second derivative, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and get started with identifying the second derivative. So y prime is going to be 3x squared. y double prime is going to be equal to 6x. Now, I need to identify my point of inflection, right? Before I can test for concavity, I want to know where it possibly would change. So therefore, I'm going to set 0 equal to 6x. And I could say x equals 0. And that is my possible point of inflection. I also sometimes abbreviate that when I'm teaching as P of I, just to kind of shorten my writing, because you'll see I'll be talking a lot. We'll be sometimes doing a little bit of writing, so sometimes I'll just abbreviate that. Does everybody follow me with this? Just kind of the exact same thing. And then basically we can see, well, um, oh, I'm sorry, did I not include this? Sorry, this is on the, um, this is on the open, uh, open interval. So therefore we need to identify, or there is no closed interval on this. So therefore we need to identify um, the concavity. So we could say that our intervals, I'm going to say from negative infinity to our point of inflection, which would be 0. And then we'll go from 0 to infinity. Those are our possible intervals of concavity, right? Because the point of inflection possibly changes at 0. So then we'll see what we're going to uh, test. And in this one, I will test x equals negative 1. And here, I'll test x equals 1. So when I go ahead and abbreviate um, to, um, when I go ahead and take the double derivative and plug in negative 1, obviously negative 1 times 6 is less than 0. So I can say f double prime of negative 1 is going to be less than 0. f double prime of 1 has to be greater than 0. All I'm doing is plugging in 1 in for x and determining is it positive or negative. Just like we did for the first derivative. You're taking kind of, you're picking test points that, are, that fall within those intervals, plugging them in. And get it. If you remember, we kind of also looked at that like the number line. I'm just writing something that's a little bit um, neater. And then we can just talk about our conclusion. So here, we're going from negative, right? That's the same thing as negative to positive, correct? So since f double prime of negative 1 is less than 0, f is concave down on negative infinity to 0. And since f double prime of negative 1 is greater than 0, f is concave up on 0 to infinity. Okay. And guys, I know this is a little bit added writing, um, but please make sure that you go through the extra steps, not just saying, oh, it's up or it's down. We got to make sure that we practice justifying why we're saying that it's concave up or concave down. And then last but not least, we need to just, we're going to justify our point of, infle uh, point of inflection. So we can say that since f double prime of x changes from negative to positive at x equals 0, the point 0, 0 is a point of inflection.